Book six, The Peace After Fiocco. Well, Ramo Gavot, give it its title. This is a bit of a throwback. It's a check-in to see if you, in fact, developed your great bow technique back in New A and G in book two, and how adept your quick uh, shifting is. Country dance is a really nice piece to lay the foundations for this. If you have any problems in country dance, you're going to have the same problems in Ramo Gavot. So when in doubt, I would rather refine things in a piece I already know and polish my technique with something I'm already good at rather than struggle with old issues in a new piece of music where I don't know anything at all. And I'm trying to find new notes and a new key signature and play in tune and do new shifts. Don't do that. Go back and practice your country dance with exceptional attention to detail. And then you'll find that you have 90% of this piece already tucked up your sleeve, waiting to go. I quite like to start with Gavotte 2, which is mostly on the second page. Actually starts down here at the end of the first page. Um, this is the D minor section. We've started in D major, we modulate to D minor. And it's also the shifty section. It requires really nice left hand skills, a relaxed left shoulder, secure positioning of the violin up on your collarbone. If your posture is crappy, you're gonna know about it in this piece because when you try and shift back and forth really fast, your hand's gonna catch on your violin and jerk out of posture. Um, I feel like it's a good idea to mark your shifting in over here. So before you even play it, grab a pencil and just do a little tracking and look at what the finger indications are telling you. At book six level, this isn't something that you should need spring feeding for. You should be able to do the maths to work this out yourself. If you get stuck, uh, it's not a bad rule of thumb to remember that when you hop into third position, your second finger is in fourth finger spot. So it's, it's often your open A or your open G. That's being replaced by a second finger. First finger is in third finger spot. Three is in one spot, four is in two spots. So you've done a switch, one and three, two and four. They just swap uh, tenure position. So, Mark your shifting in and make sure that you mark it in over the correct note. I say that because, this is a great example, right at the top of the second page, we have a third finger printed over the B in bar 27. So we find bar 27, it's right here. Ya dum bum 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 ba ya da 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 dum. The B is printed, sorry, the three is printed over the B, but we don't shift on that note. We shift on the preceding note, the open D string. And we did a lot of this shifting back in book four, especially in the Vivaldi third movement. That second page is a gold mine of shifting while you're playing an open string, not shifting on the note. So it's nice to mark your shift in above the open D, not over the third finger. Don't play the D then shift, shift as you're playing the D. There's a few spots like that. So just check when you see fingering that isn't first position, check if it's preceded by an open string note that facilitates the shift or if you have to shift on the note. It's valuable infrastructure to set up the piece accurately. Now there's not a lot else that goes on in here. You've got to check that your right hand fingers are really working well. And if you need to do something about that, you can play jacks on the floor. Ask a parent to show you how to play jacks because it's one of those uh, historical games. <laughs> you need good dexterity in your hands, in the back of your fingers, and it's nice to be able to lift here. So you see how my hands flat, this is a flat line. Lift your fingers up so that we have this flexion in your knuckles through here. Ugh. Yeah, don't tilt your whole hand, that's different. Just lift with your knuckles and then drip down and try and lift with the back of your knuckles again. Yeah, so we're trying to get this point as high up as we possibly can. It's not this, that's your wrist moving. We want to make sure that these knuckle joints are flexy. So, yeah. Oh, bit of this stuff. Make sure you're nice and loose. And then grab just your bow. And you want to make sure that you can easily. Oh yeah, it's the same thing. Ah uh, yeah, okay, my I'm doing exactly what I just did. Try to get the right angle for you. Droop, pull up, droop, pull up. And you want to be able to catch rain in here. 
Okay, a litre of drinking water, thanks. All of my fingers are working. And this is why we do that stuff like monkey climbing up the bow. Okay, this finger dexterity in our right hand, engaging all the fingers and making sure that our joints can move nice and loosely. If you need to stop this video and, you know, contribute to your 10,000 pull-ups, go for your life. I'll just do a few while you pause it. Okay, we're good. So this is our down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 up. And if you can do that well, this is a walk in the park. Then we just incorporate a bit of string crossing that comes from our upper arm, helping us change levels. And then we worry about the left hand and yeah, walk in the park, like I said. If you can sing this piece, it won't be difficult for you to learn all the things. If you can't sing it, you're going to have to learn it more slowly and artificially block by block, like really hone just this stuff and then maybe play the left hand with separate back and forth bows because you'll need to read it, like every single note. If you understand the type of sound you're aiming for already, it's a lot easier to just do and with this successive approximation, get really close to the, what you're aiming for. So I'm going to start by playing the second part of the piece. I'm going to play from here, the minor section. And then we'll circle back and look at the first half. So, ah, set my F natural back on its tip. Please make sure that your left hand doesn't collapse in any way, shape or form, that your finger's perpendicular to the string and that your thumb is relaxed on the back of your violin and that you can tap it freely. Ready, and. the bow won't bounce. So this feeling. If you want to pause this and have a practice of establishing that bounce solidly, go for your life. Okay, heading back over to page two. I'm going to play from bar 32, which is it feels like a recapitulation, but it isn't. There's a pitfall. That's your leading C sharp. C sharp is saying, hi, this is in D minor. Don't forget. Sorry to interrupt. That was really important. Let's do that again from bar 32. this a little bit and I tend to double dot them so really feel like seven eighths one eighth seven eighths one eighth on those dot equators let's play again from bar 32 because there's a fair chunk of stuff going on in there I feel like that's got some Vivaldi commonality as well in this and you've got to be able to stop and cross very very cleanly and make sure that your right shoulder is just in loose and relaxed as your left also worth mentioning, have a nice core. If your feet are sloshing about or if your core is loose, you're not going to be able to swing this arm freely. You need a little tension in your abdominal muscles to be able to move this really freely. So again at bar 32, ready and... Resist the 
the temptation to thud down on that note. <gasps> Another diminuendo on the ending. It feels a lot like a in G minor to play with all those tapering endings. You never get to boom and have a victory moment. It's always shh, be quiet. So mark your shifts in. Practice your right hand. Take it apart if you need to. If, if it's too difficult to read the shifting and the bowing and the accidentals, take the bowing out, get rid of that, and just play. And get your intonation absolutely under control first. Gavotte one. Oh, D major. This is dead easy. It's like playing humoresque. Uh, it even has a really similar feeling to this idea. Right? Humoresque introduced harmonics too. So it's kind of nice that they're back in here in the D major. Let's play it. I don't think there's anything heinous in here. Probably finding the F sharp correctly is the biggest challenge, but you can usually fix that by playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in third position, a la. That really helps your brain work out where the note is, where to play it, where to put the third finger, how to feel that tone space between the fingers. It's quite generous. Um, and to remember that it's, it's, a, it's a happy F sharp. Not a sad F sharp. Okay? From the beginning. And. Dolce, sweetly. Sorry. So that trill, that's a danger point. Make sure your F sharp it stays consistent and that your tone doesn't get narrower or wider and flappy or we have trouble. So slow practice on it. Then a little faster. We would like that sympathetic resonance from the E sparkling through. Every time we hear the E, it should kind of go, woo, woo, woo. You'll only get that if your E string is naked. If you have a finger or any weight on the E string, remember, it won't vibrate. We know this already. Try for me a ya da dum ba da dum ba like mordants, ready, play. And if you need to, pause me and sort your intonation out and play that twinkle twinkle little star to find your F sharp correctly. Okay, so I presume you've got your intonation sorted. Let's play from the trill and continue on. Ready? There's that tapering ending and now we buckle up for forte. sticky bits and they're mostly in the second page and they're to do with not mapping out the shifting very well or not listening adequately and having the brain say oi that's a wrong note the first time you play it if you have heard this enough times your brain will self-correct and say yeah um, no not cool but you do have to take care with that it's also a great idea to record yourself playing so that then you can put all your stuff down and just give your full attention to what you actually played. Because sometimes you didn't actually play what you think you did. Okay. And that's a really common, common issue. It's quite common to have things like, yeah, 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 I was fine, I was fine, no problem. 
when you hear it played back, you go, whoa, that F sharp was nowhere near an F sharp. So this practice, if it doesn't sound like twinkle, you're playing it wrong, dead easy. And most people play it flat, so make your tone nice and wide. Um, oh, that's how to play the start. I, I didn't think of that. Our beginning. We just pluck those two notes, but you have to start with your bow on both strings. Good luck. Love to see your video when you've got it.